Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a custom template for archives using Avada layouts. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. WordPress archives are automated pages that allow users to access collected posts that have something in common. Archives can be based on category, tag, author, date, and custom post type, as well as custom taxonomy based archives. I've imported the retail pre built website here, and I'm currently on an archives page. In this case, it's the blog category of tips and tricks. This page is being displayed using an Avada layout which is giving us full control over the content and how it displays. We can see there's a header showing the blog category, and under this is a grid of posts all from the tips and tricks category. If we head to Avada Layouts and look at the layout for the blog archives, we can see there is no header selected and so it's using the global header. A page title bar layout section called page PTB has been assigned to the layout, as has a content layout section called blog archives content. And again, there's no footer selected, so this layout will display the global footer. If we look at the layout conditions and head to the archives tab, we can see it's set to all archive pages with three exclusions, which in this case are the product archives as they have their own layout. So that's basically how it works. The layout conditions determine where the layout is used, and the layout sections provide the content. For archives, the content is going to be mostly dynamic. So let's look at the elements of this layout that is pulling the archive content. But before we do that, what does an archive page look like without the layout? Well to do that we could either remove the conditions on this layout, or we could just delete the layout itself. Let's do that so I can walk through the process of setting up an archives layout from the start. I'll just delete this layout here. So now, before we make a new one, let's quickly look at an archives page to see the default layout. I'll just come back to my tips and tricks archives page and refresh. Ok, so by default it looks pretty basic, with a simple page title bar, and a full width post. With Avada Layouts we can do a lot better. So now, back in Avada Layouts, the first thing to do is to create the new layout. I'll just give the new layout a name here, and then click on Create New Layout. It adds itself to the layouts, but at this point it has no conditions to determine when it should be used, and no custom content. As it's a conditional layout, the layout will first become active when we set the conditions. So let's do that. On a live site, you'd want to do this last, as it currently has no content, and so would display an empty page. If we mouse over the bottom of the layout box, we can see that this is where we add conditions to the layout. I'll just click on that, and here we can see the layout conditions dialog. As we want this layout only to be used on archives, let's go to the archives tab. And as you can see, there are a large number of possible conditions for archives, and you can set the conditions for your layout as you wish. Here I will include the All Archives Pages condition by selecting the tick box. This turns green, and we can see in the right column that we have now included the All Archives Pages condition to the layout. So this layout is now active for all archives, not just blog posts. So that would be portfolio archives, and FAQs, and any custom post types, etc. But on this site, the only other active archives are the shop ones, so we can safely take this approach. It's pretty standard to set one archive layout for all archives, and then set exclusions for the other archive types if you want to use a different layout for them. So still under archives, I'm going to exclude product archive types, all product categories, and all product tags, so the shop archives are not included in this layout. Ok, that's the conditions I want for this layout, and the dialog auto saves with any changes. So we can now just close it to return to the layout. So now at the bottom of our archives layout, we can see that our conditions have been applied. One more thing to note here is that you can move the layouts around with this move icon, and this allows you to set precedence for the layouts. If there's a situation where a certain post or page might meet the conditions of two layouts, the one lower down will take precedence. This is pretty uncommon, but it's there if you need it. See the linked video on understanding Avada's conditional layouts for more details on this. Ok, so now to add the layout sections for this layout. We still have them, as only the layout itself was deleted and not the layout sections that were added to it, as layout sections can be added to multiple layouts. So I will add the page title bar layout section, and the archives content layout section. 
So now let's edit each one so we can have a look at how they are pulling the archive content. As we saw on the original archives page, the page title bar layout section has a background image. And if we look at that, it's pulling it from the featured image. And there's a fallback image if no featured image is set. As this is an archive, that would be, for example, a featured image set on a blog category. Now let's look at the title. That's using dynamic content, and here it's set to heading. You'll find this under the page title bar, dynamic content options. What this does is pretty cool. First it tries to get the custom heading set in the page options. If that is not set, as it won't be with automated pages like archives, then it will grab the appropriate title. This might be the post or page title, but on an archive it will check what kind of archive it is, and then get the heading accordingly. If the context is turned on, it would also add that. So on our example archive it would say, Category, Tips and Tricks. OK, under this is another container with a promo code that only displays if there is something in the cart. That's pretty cool, but not really much to do with archives, so let's move on and have a look at the content layout section. OK, as we can see here, this layout section is as simple as it gets. There's one element, and that's the postcard archives element. This is just like the postcard element, but specifically for archives. It's using the blog layout 3 postcard, and is displaying the archive posts in a grid in two columns. If we take a quick look at the postcard used in this element, you can see it's just made up of the postcard image element, a title element dynamically pulling the title and link to the permalink, as well as the meta element, a text block element pulling the excerpt archive description, and finally a button, again linked to the permalink. For more details on building postcards, please see the How to Use Postcards in Avada video, linked below. OK, so that's the content layout section. OK, so let's head back to our archives page and refresh again. And here's our rebuilt layout. We have our page title bar, and as we can see, this is displaying the tips and tricks category of blog posts here. The banner about the cart discount is not showing, as I don't have anything in the cart. But if I just go and add a product to the cart, and then return and refresh, we can see the banner kicks in offering us 20% off. Under this, we can see the category posts being pulled from the content layout section via the postcard archives element. And if I go to the fashion category, we can see a different featured image is being pulled via the dynamic content in the background image in our page title bar layout section, coming from the featured image that I added to that category. And below this, we have of course a different set of posts. All right, that's it. As you can see with Avada Layouts and Avada Builder, you can design and build archives pages to display exactly how you want them. This concludes our video on how to build a custom archives layout. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.